they utilize in the longevity, how long they can stick around on the field, how long you can utilize that friend god, going to be a big important piece. But we are getting in to this top four. This is turn one. We are starting this region, this special event championship here in Bologna with Ruben leaning out with the Calorex Shadow Rider and that Clefairy and the Thunderous and the Incineroar on Hippolyte's side. Yeah, let's go here in the top four. Hippolyte once again going for the same lead combination that worked so well in the previous round in his top eight match. Thunderous and Incineroar looking to disrupt what Ruben is trying to go for. But Ruben, yeah, very good setup there already available for him. He could just go for maybe a double protect, then a follow me and nasty plot, and he would threaten a lot of damage. <laughs> well, I think the chance that Hippolyte this time around does not bring the restricted, <laughs> that's going to be pretty low. But let's see. You never know with what he will bring to the table here. As we are going to see, just a double protect a piece on Ruben's side of the field, protecting against any fake cuts that are coming out from this Incineroar rightly blocked into that Clefairy as we are going to see the Thunderous lock in with an early Eerie Impulse trying to lower the special attack on the big special attack at Calyrex but blocked this turn and now that Clefairy has freed up Marcus to go for the Follow Me, pull in that Eerie Impulse and leave the Calyrex in a position where it can pretty much for free get a nasty plot set up. Yeah, I've talked to Hippolyte a little bit about this particular situation because um, yes, on paper, Thunderous looks so good also into the Calyrex Shadow Rider matchup because you have the Eerie Impulse, you can lower the damage output but then as we've been seeing not only fake out as an option to support that Kelly Rex but also the follow me and so yeah Hippolyte was saying like yeah you, you often you have to go for the taunt first of all before so to shut down the redirection before you can then go for the for, so that Thunderous can do its actual job which is go for the eerie impulse but Ruben also aware of this switching out the Clefairy right into the Mian Shao. Yeah, bidding that follow me, the Mean Shao coming onto the field and instantly terrestrializing that Shadow Rider Calyrex. Gonna go into that fairy type here and give it a little bit of an alleviation if a knockout comes out from that Incineroar. We are gonna see the taunt from that Thunderous and it is into the Mean Shao. Not really gonna affect it too much other than blocking that Wide God going forward and the mm. Astral Barrage in return into the Thunderous and that Incineroar gonna be resisted on the Incineroar but doing huge damage, taking over 50% health to that Thunderous as a possible Parting shot comes out from the Incineroar, going to reduce the special attack and the attack on that Calyrex by one stage. Yeah, big first blow here by Ruben in this top four match. Says he, he doesn't need to go for the Nasty Plot right away, but instead will just go for the raw damage. Of course, now this could be an opportunity for Hippolyte to bring out their own Calyrex. Um, the Mean Shao cannot go for Wide Guard, so no, and you have no redirection on the board. Of course, Fake Out is active, but against a Covered Cloak on the Thunderous and a Ghost type Calyrex, that Mean Shao yeah, doesn't really have anything to do here on the field. It probably has to swap out here for Ruben, so yeah, that taunt might actually be not so bad on the Mean Shao at all, just stopping that Wide Guard. Um, now, of course, on Ruben's side, the Calyrex is already terrestrialized, but yeah, you still don't want to take an Eerie Impulse and Astro Barrage combination. No, definitely not. You do have the active Fake Out, so you can prevent an Eerie Impulse coming out from the Thunderous into your own Calyrex this turn. It might be an option here, but at the cost of going right down to that Sash and taking some big damage from the opposing Calyrex on Hippolyte's side of the field. And as a response to that threat of the Astro Barrage, we are going to see that terrestrialization, and it is going to go full force into that Fairy type. Going to be able to fight out some big draining kiss damage and the fake out coming out a big predict here from Ruben stopping that terrestrialization as the taunt comes out from the thunder is going to try and prevent maybe a nasty plot coming out but it's the astro barrage not one to mess around getting some big damage onto the field not quite enough to pick the knockout out onto the thunderous but doing some really respectable damage nonetheless yeah very interesting approach here by Ruben in this matchup not going for the setup right away but instead going for the uh, Astro Barrage after Astro Barrage and Hippolyte is still looking to find that perfect position um, to go for the setup of his own but hasn't quite found that and um, once again yeah nice predict there by Ruben saying that okay either way either you terrestrialize and I will get off the fake out and, and flinch you or if you stay in the ghost form um, then yeah Astro Barrage will be four times super effective and just get the knockout that way so nice play again by Ruben um, calling the terrestrialization in a way and I think this is once again a good outcome here for Ruben Ruben. Neither side have yet gone for the committal setup yet. Um, so my question is, 
Is this a game where we don't see any nasty plots at all? Maybe that is what we're going to see. The Minxia not wanting to contend, staying on the field, taking any damage. The Rillaboom going to take its place. Summon that grassy terrain to the field with that grassy surge ability for the next five turns. We are going to see no protect from the Calyrex on Ruben's side. It is going to be susceptible to another Eerie Impulse. Going down to minus three on that special attack stat. Draining Kiss going to be the choice mm. from Ruben. Fired into the Calyrex. Going to do a little bit of damage, take a below 50% damage, but in response, he believes uh, Calyrex going to return with a Draining Kiss of its own into the Rillaboom, but showing how effective that Assault Fest is, taking that attack very well. Yeah, I think this was very intentional on Ruben's side to not take the knockout on the Thunderous. Um, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to give Hippolyte a chance to maybe get a switch into another Pokemon um, to make it a little bit easier for himself to, to get that Nasty Plot set up. But yeah, now after that Eerie Impulse, uh, it's it's not clear for me uh, where you go there from as Ruben. Do you do you want to try and, and kind of neutralize that those drops by setting up the Nasty Plot? Or that's the easier way, I think, just swapping it out and bringing in the Calyrex back in at a later time. Yeah, and we are going to say it switch out, reset all of those stat drops from that troublesome eerie impulse the mean Xiao hitting the field for Ruben now and also that thunderous retreating saving it for later as well and the incinero going to come onto the field going to drop an all-important intimidate onto that Rillaboom blocked by the inner focus ability on that mean Xiao though but it does leave the Calyrex free on Hebelert still of the field to get a nasty plot all important going to boost its special attack up two stages but no fake out came out from the Rillaboom instead it's going to be the Woodhammer doing a lot of damage to that Calyrex even after the intimidate but now that there is no more Calyrex on the field for Ruben's side, so no more S1 on nerf. Uh, Kyrex can recover just a little bit with that Citrus Berry and the Grassy Terrain. Yeah, really nice play there from both players, you know, taking advantage of the tools that they've got out. The nasty plot in particular from the Kyrex on Hippolyte side of the field really becoming a big offensive weapon now, but there is the active fake out from the Mean Xiao. It's not affected by fake out from the opposing center, also, it has a free fake out into the Kyrex, and there yep. is always the possibility of scouting out a protect from the Kyrex, going for a feint, yes. doubling into that. Yes. with the Rillaboom. Yeah, I think that is one option. If you predict that Incineroar to not go for the fake out, you can go for a feint and Woodhammer combination into the Calyrex, potentially getting the knockout even with that Intimidate drop. So one thing that I'm thinking about is, could Hippolyte maybe go reveal the final Pokemon, the Clefairy, uh, and with that friend guard support, then maybe you can withstand that combination, and it looks like that is what Hippolyte will try to do. So let's see. Did Ruben opt to go for the fake out, or is it going to be the feint with the Mian Chao? We see the Clefairy come onto the field. It is going to bring with it that friend guard, both of those defenses. No fake out coming out, no feint coming out from Ruben's side of the field. A draining kiss into the Mian Chao. It is going to take wow. it down to its last two. Huge damage, but it does leave the Mian Chao open to go for an attack alongside that Rillaboom. But the health recovery yeah. there, back to full health in fighting shape. Yeah, has a close combat into that Clefairy. Not going to be very effective. Do some uh, not too bad. Yep. damage but dropping its defenses in the process and the Rillaboom left to throw another wood hammer onto this Calyrex. Yeah but with the Intimidate and the Friend Guard actually not that much damage at all and all the recovery that Calyrex enjoyed now after the Straining Kiss definitely what Hippolyte wanted to see in this turn so now Ruben of course has confirmation knows all four Pokemon uh, probably was hoping that maybe it's not the Clefairy there as the last Pokemon but Hippolyte was prepared for this exact situation so could take the close combat pretty well and now Ruben has both of his Pokemon with Fake Out kind of stuck on the field, and it's very difficult to, to swap one of them out um, to try and get, um, yeah, the Clefairy or your own Calyrex on the board. Um, there's always the threat of that Astro Barrage, so I feel like Mian Chao on Ruben's side probably is forced to go for the White Guard, but then there's always the threat of the Draining Kiss. Help in hand coming out from the Clefairy. Gonna see a White Guard launched out from the Mian Chao, potentially protecting against an Astro Barrage that is coming out, but it's wow. not the Astro Barrage. Yep. It is the Draining kiss and it will be into this Rillaboom oh. plus two helping hand enough to take it down big move by Hippolyte taking the KO bypassing the white guard and with the helping hand and the boost from the previous turns now knocks out Rillaboom gets another special attack boost from Grim Ney and yeah Hippolyte once again proving why he is such a strong player and um, yeah he has won a regional championship before he is looking to add the title here uh, to his resume but well we're not that far yet Ruben still has their Calyrex with full health yeah and you've got the perfect opportunity now probably to go for a wide guard to give alleviation from maybe an Astro Barrage and try and get that nasty plot set up yourself because you really need to propel yourself back into the match somehow and using that nasty plot is definitely a way to do it 
but if you lose the Min Xiao in the process of that, you come susceptible to those Astro Barrages going forward. And also, you can't avoid the, the damage that you're going to take from that Draining Kliss as well. The Calyrex on Hibbler side of the field is plus three special attack right now, so it's going to hit very, very hard, especially when supported by a helping hand from this Clefairy. Yeah, let's see which move. Uh, there's no white guard as Ruben switched out into Clefairy to set up this nasty plot, but I think it's once again going to be that draining kiss coming out, but how much damage will it do? It's targeted into the Calyrex and wow, lots of damage, but thanks to the friend guard, actually, um, yeah, Calyrex hangs on there this time around. No recovery for Hippolyte's Calyrex because it's already at full health. Yeah, that's so going to be so hard to take down as well because of the friend guard that both players have out on the field, bolstering those defenses. Even with something like Helping Hand now, yeah. are you going to be able to have enough to be able to take down, especially if you're Ruben, the full health Calyrex on Hippolyte's side of the field? Because yep. if you're Hippolyte, I think you're in a much preferable situation where you can just fire off that Helping Hand Astro yes. Barrage and you'll be able to clear the opposite side of the field. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now with me and Xiao off the field, there's no more white guard, and of course you cannot switch in and use white guard at the same time. So, yeah, what is there left for Ruben to do? Um, of course, maybe the Clefairy can support the Calyrex with a helping hand, and maybe a critical hit could do it. But yeah, let's see which of the Calyrex moves first. Helping hand, of course, also over on Hippolyte's side. We are going to see which Calyrex move first. It is going to be Ruben's. It is going to fire out that boosted helping hand, Astro Barrage. Is it enough? Oh, it's, it's a, a huge critical hit! Combo hit. Massive out. critical hit! Double wow. knockout from Ruben! That is exactly what he needed here! Showing how important it is to win this speed tie. It means all that if you can land the critical hit, pull yourself from looking like it was no hope into a real position to close up and win this first game in this top four match. Double Grim Nebu, Citrus Berry activated. All of a sudden, Hippolyte down to their last two Pokemon, and it is Incineroar and Thunderous, the supporting cast, not the Pokemon that you want to deal out a lot of damage. And it looks like Ruben, with that play and that critical hit, found a way to come back and claim this first game. That's the risk you run, and you run a bit of a slower color and just to get those defensive capabilities, but sometimes running that risk of a critical hit landing in those key might be needed. Um, so yeah, also for Ruben, I think we might just see the same kind of approach again, but this time around it's going to be, yeah, Mian Shao and Calyrex for Ruben, who's only one game away from advancing to the finals, and Hippolyte on the other side once again will try to go with his trusted lead, that Incineroar and the Thunderous. Yeah, different lead here from Ruben with that Min Xiao coming out. It does pressure the fake out into both targets on Hebel outside of the field. The one thing you would say is though that the Covert Cloak is really protecting that Thunderous to allow it to get one of those big eerie impulses off to slow down that Calyrex right now. Is Ruben almost going to bait though the, the Min Xiao and switch it straight out into the Clefairy? So protecting the Calyrex and then potentially having that follow me the next turn so you're not subject to those eerie impulses and then if you've got the Clefairy out the Incineroar isn't too much of an issue after that either. Yeah of course close combat is now really threatening into that Incineroar so maybe a switch um, off that Incineroar maybe even into the Clefairy is something that could be used but no it's the fake out going into the Minchow to potentially break the focus sash, I would assume. Eerie Impulse is coming out on that Calyrex, but it looks like Hippolyte is fine just giving up that Incineroar. Nasty Plot will put that Calyrex right back to a neutral stage of special attack, but close combat coming down into the Incineroar, and it's a one-hit KO, of course, with inner focus. Not affected by the fake out, not affected by the intimidate, and it looks like Hippolyte just, yeah, didn't really see any way of what he could switch in there. I mean, you could have switched in the Calyrex, but that would have been risky because, of course, um, Ruben could have just gone for an Astro Barrage. So Hippolyte is, of course, he was well aware that there is inner focus on the yeah. Mian Xiao, um, but he's saying, okay, I just need to break the focus, Ash, um, and it's going to be worth it to yeah, lose the Incineroar in the process. Yeah, exactly that, and I think it's a valuable fake out, but at the cost of losing that Incineroar could be a bit dicey going forward for Hibberlag because it doesn't have access to that pivot any longer. It doesn't have access to the Intimidate support that could be quite useful depending on what Ruben's two final Pokemon are in the back. But the Mean Xiao in a position now where it has picked up that knockout and not in a great position. Yeah. Why we're going to see it switch out and maybe the 
the Clefairy is something that Ruben is opting for. Not the Clefairy, though. It is going to be that Rillaboom. It does offer the support with additional fake out, the grassy terrain as well for oh, that healing. I like that play by Ruben quite a bit. I think he's going to try and bait out this terrestrialization over on Hippolyte's side so that he has fake out pressure the next turn uh, once Calyrex is terrestrialized into the fairy type. And also, I think there is a reasonable chance that Hippolyte will go for a taunt in that slot to, to stop a potential redirection. Uh, follow me in the next turn. But no, it's just going to be the eerie impulse. And yeah, Ruben did not terrestrialize or protect the Calyrex. Yeah, it's very risky here, but go on uh, just undo that nasty plot once again, get back to neutral special attack. So essentially nothing happening. But on Hippolyte's side of the field, he is going to go for the nasty plot. <laughs> no eerie impulse on Ruben's side. So the Calyrex on Hippolyte's side of the field is going to be the more threatening now. It has terrestrialized, like you say. It doesn't have that weakness to those Astral Barrages, but it is going to be susceptible, like you say, Marcus, to that fake out from the Rillaboom that's just joined the field. Yeah, Ruben playing a little bit with fire there with his restricted Pokemon, not going for the terrestrialization, but now he's saying, okay, now uh, the potential <laughs> that an Astral Barrage is coming out is so high, I need to uh, change my typing to uh, not be super effectively hit by that move. Um, we'll go ahead and turn into the, into the Fairy type, and now, of course, um, Eerie Impulse could hit again, but no fake out coming out from the Rillaboom. Yeah, no fake out. A big play here. Decision as well from Ruben as an Astro Blarge is fired out from Ruben's side of the field, and it is going to be a minus two, so not doing quite enough damage that is required. The plus two Astro Barrage from Hibbelet's side of the field into Ruben's and doing some big damage, taking massive chunk out of that Calyrex. But the Woodhammer in return from the Rillaboom. It's enough for the Huge KO. knockout. Ruben taking out the Calyrex Shadow Rider with his combination. Yeah, he had to know that even with that eerie impulse, that Astro Barrage is just barely enough to bring it in range for the Woodhammer and also his Calyrex just barely making it through the turn. Now we'll be able to recover a little bit more with that Citrus Berry Rillaboom <laughs> going down to the recall in the process. So much back and forth here, but at the end of it, as the dust settles, Ruben still has a Calyrex Shadow Rider in the field and Hippolyte does not. Yeah, and all it comes down to now for Hippolyte is that Thunderous and the Clefairy, not the offensive presence that you really want to have to contend with in front of something like that Calyrex Shadow Rider. Now the Clefairy coming out for Ruben. It is going to be able to support that Calyrex with those Follow Me's and allow maybe something like a nasty plot to be fired up or oh, just go for the all-out attacking now. Absolutely, yeah, that Clefairy not even carrying any attacking moves. Ruben could just go ahead, go for like a Follow Me and nasty plot slowly but steadily boosting up that Calyrex Shadow Rider again. And the only source of damage output on Hippolyte team is Thunderbolt. That will take quite a while, especially in grassy terrain and factoring in draining kiss, but Hippolyte, uh, yeah, he doesn't want to give up yet. He's trying to still put in a fight, um, but yeah, it's, it's looking very, very uh, difficult for him to make a comeback happen this time. Yeah, because you're now in the position where, yeah, your Clefairy's taunted, but you can protect your Calyrex, you can just switch out the Clefairy into the Mincho. You could get caught yep. with maybe something from uh, the Clefairy on Hippolyte's side of the field, but I do believe that the the, the Clefairy on Hippolyte's doesn't have that sing which could maybe yep. bring you back into this match. It's actually got after you, so not really going to be that effective going into these next few turns. Mincho going to have a free turn in, potentially might take a Thunderbolt. Is it going to be enough to take it? Maybe not after a helping hand. Helping hand coming out. Let's see. Kelly Rex does go for the protect. Maybe this was yeah, the, the last last chance, last effort by Hippolyte, but that Thunderbolt is protected, is yeah, not dealing any damage. And now the Mian Shao joining the field once again. Could go for the fake out. Um, but I think it's more likely that Mian Shao will just switch out again into the Clefairy because um, yeah, the Clefairy over on Hippolyte's side doesn't have much to do besides clicking Helping Hand that has a higher priority than Fake Out, and you really want to get the Friend Guard back up on Ruben's side, but nope, instead, it's going to be the Helping Hand and maybe just a double target, maybe just a close combat coming up for the Mean Shower. He's going to go for the Draining Kiss, the Calyrex into the Thunderous, do some nice damage, so it'll get a little bit of health back and probably put it well out of range from this Helping Hand Thunderbolt that could be potentially coming out from this Thunderous into that Calyrex. It is a huge bit of damage. Oh. But not quite enough, but it does pick up the paralysis here. So it is going to be inflicted by that status condition. A close combat from the Mean Chow, not quite enough to pick up the Thunderous and do that defense drop as well. So um, not quite over yet, Marcus. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it still looks very difficult, but is there a way back for Hippolyte? I mean, he still has the Follow Me available on the Clefairy, and with the only attacking move um, on that Mianxiao being the close combat, um, 
Uh, that wouldn't do that much damage uh, to that Clefairy. So, oh, it's the Feint, though, of course, outpacing the priority of Follow Me. Nicely done here by Ruben. Um, and we saw it is a Taunt that is launched into the Mian Shao to try and stop a potential Clefairy switch in, but instead, now, um, Kelly Rex can just go for the Astro Barrage, will knock out the Thunderous, and that means Hippolyte is left with no Pokemon that can do any damage. The players are already shaking their hands, and Ruben will advance to the finals. Absolutely incredible play here from Ruben in this game, too. And he is moving into the finals here at the Bologna Special Event. What a game. Indeed, yeah.